Hello everybody and welcome to a new One Punch Man The Strongest video. Today I'm going over a PvE and PvP tier list for One Punch Man The Strongest. Uh, both global, Southeast Asia, etc. Uh, this could also be taken for CN if I, I mean, I doubt any Chinese players are watching as YouTube is blocked on China. But nonetheless, if you decide to play CN like I have decided recently because global is kind of going to shit, <laughs> um, then you may or may not. Uh, try to use this video as a guide, although they're just mostly my opinions on these characters, as I've only really tested up to Goketsu. So, uh, starting off with the PvE section, and then I'll go to PvP later, which I will leave a timestamp in, I will choose... Uh, I'm going in order of when they released, which means I start off with Bakuzan Plus. Now, technically, uh, in any server, you can get him for free. However, he is only there to trick new players into awakening him. I honestly find this to be really scummy on Finger Fun and all the other companies. However, it's a gacha game, so of course it's going to be scummy. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to put him in Please Stop Existing. Actually, it's just F, because his event is very good and gives you four Monster Stones for free, when most events only give you like two or three. For instance, the current anniversary event in the One Punch Man The Strongest Southeast Asia server gives two for the event, plus one more for the anniversary event, which puts you at three Awakening Stones, and or not Awakening Stones, <laughs> Evolution Stones, and the Pig God event in June of last year gave, I think, three, and then four if you bought them, but I digress. So next up we have Child Emperor, which I'm going to say is like a solid B. He's not bad, but he's not good. And he is the highest AoE outside of Silver Fang and then all the other ones that come out later. So he's good. Uh, his Awakening 2 is decently strong, as those dogs are kind of annoying earlier on. But I don't. But he's not really worth it. He's certainly not in the realm of a must pull, and his Awakening 2 isn't worth it with coming up SSR pluses and URs, just in comparison. Even with your Siryu and the time between when he's count, well, he's not really ever countered, but the time when he is in and out of meta, I don't think Child Emperor is worth it. Now, next up we have Boros Plus, which I'm going to put in A tier. Now, the reason for this is because his Awakening 2 is very strong, and because he does break through, in quotes, unyielding before breakthrough exists, but he does not break through specialized unyielding, so. He's good, and his Awakening 2 is kind of like a Goketsu-esque effect, but it's not good enough to be like a must-pull or S, especially not even for PvP or PvE. But since this is a PvE tier list, I'm going to put him a little higher than Child Emperor. Actually, I'm going to put Child Emperor at D tier, since I forgot this is a PvE tier list. Uh, which means I'm going to put Bakuzan to please stop existing. So this is the current tier list. Now... They aren't bad, I mean, besides Bakuzan, these aren't bad characters, and generally you don't see specialized unyielding inside of PvE, except for Crescent Tower, I believe. And so, generally, uh, Boros is a very strong character, and then Child Emperor is also decent, but he is more of a PvP-based character, and is thus not very good for PvE, except for like... Some characters are both good for both. Now, next up we have Carnage Kabuto Plus. Now, he's okay, and he's definitely better than Boros. I would actually no, he's definitely worse than Boros. He doesn't quite do as much damage. And I mean, like, he's good, but just only really for PvP. In my own opinion. He he does work for PvE. But for PvP, he's much better. So generally, I'd say if you're going for just PvE, don't... I don't honestly think you should get Carnage Kabuto. His follow-ups are okay, but usually bosses only hit like once or twice. Generally only once, actually. Because Boros only attacks once. Or Awakened Boros and Normal Boros only attacks once. And then Bakuzan Plus, the Resist Invasion boss, only attacks once. So generally, it's not really worth it for bosses. And then for general purpose... He's not really all that great. Um, I mean, he's good in teams. His Reflect is okay. But he's better for PvP than he is for PvE. And for that purpose, I'm going to put him a little lower than Boros. Now, next up is Metal Bat. 
Now, he is very good for PvP. PvE, sorry. He's very good for PvE. But the issue with that is that Metal Bat gets, like... He, hmm, he's countered by Unyielding and Specialized Unyielding. So he's not all that great for Crescent Tower. And he... I mean, he's very good for bossing, which is why he's an S. And he's a very good single target, and especially because he can hit more than one target too. So, for that reason, I'm going to put him in S. But he's not quite a must-pull, in my opinion, unless you're planning to pull for Metal Bat, which I generally say you should. But actually, yeah, I'm going to put him in must-pull. Uh, if you're going for pure PvE, he is a no-brainer, in my own opinion. He's very strong. Now, next up is Gary Uganshu Plus. Um, well, he's a core, so he's always a must pull no matter what you're going for, so make sure to get him. Now, next up, we also have SSR Plus King. Now, he's very good for PvP. For PvE? Eh. He's not really good. <laughs> for PvE, he's F. He does, like, I think no damage, except for his drones, and his drones aren't good for PvE. So, I'm gonna put him in F. Now, we have Atomic Samurai. Now, he's good for PvP and PvE, in my own opinion. Uh, especially his Awakening 2. is very strong against opponents even without Unyielding. And his, P his Awakening 1 is also good against opponents even with Unyielding. So, I'm going to put him in S. Now, he's not a must-pull, but he's, he's, he's a must-pull, I think. If you're just going for general purpose, and for both PvE and PvP. But for just PvE, I don't think you need to get him. He's he's useful, but he's not that useful. And his follow-ups are good, but if you only have Awakening 1, oh, oh, <laughs> Awakening 1, then he's not very good about against bosses. And he doesn't... Actually, I'm going to move him down to A. He doesn't do very well against bosses at Awakening 1. Awakening 2, he's good against bosses. But Awakening 1, he does not do very well. Now, next up, we have Silver Fang Plus. Now, the thing is, he doesn't go through Unyielding, which is not generally an issue against most things. But he's an AoE character, and most things aren't going to have Bomb Shield. Well, generally. Sometimes they do. But he also is just... It's not a character you need to go for, for PvE, as there's much better ones. I'm gonna put him, like, C tier. Actually, I'm gonna put him a little... Yeah, I know. C tier is fine. For this reason, just because he doesn't really... He doesn't stand out. And yes, he goes through Bomb Shield. But you're not gonna be encountering that much outside of, like, Hero X Monster. And even then, there's better options. So, he's not really great. Also, he has Evasion as his Awakening passive. I'm pretty sure. Actually, he might... That might be his normal passive. No. Yeah, that's his normal passive. He has Evasion. Which is not all that great. <laughs> okay, next up we have Garo Plus. Now, Garo Plus is good for PvE, but he is not a must. He does follow up, with even without unyielding. Actually, I think. I can't remember if he follows up even without unyielding. He introduces Specialized Guard. Well, yeah, he introduces Specialized Guard to the game. And he is tanky, he has unyielding, and he's very good against bosses. So for that reason, I'm going to put him an S, but I don't think he's a must-pull, even for PvE. Now, next up we have Goketsu. Now, Goketsu is not all that great for PvE. I only pulled him because I thought Garo was going to be on wheel, and then I pulled Garo on the wheel. And that was dumb of me, because I'm pretty sure Phoenix Man is coming out in wheel, like, mm, on Thursday. So that was really fucking dumb of me. I'm going to put him here. He doesn't follow up. He doesn't have any lasting effects. He's He does breakthrough. Actually, actually, since he does breakthrough, I'm going to put him there just above Boros. But he's, he's very good. Don't get me wrong, but he's not all that great for PvE. Now, next up, we have Phoenix Man. Now, Phoenix Man is also a character that's probably going to be on the wheel. Um, now, I love Phoenix Man. I haven't ever used him, sadly. Actually, I have. I, I used him in, J in the Japanese server. And he's very good for later Crescent Tower, as a lot of the enemies one-shot you. 
if you don't have a yielding. So for that reason, I'm going to put him just above. I'm going to put him here as he's very good for support in PvE, especially in Crescent Tower, specifically Crescent Tower. Um, he revives your characters, which is an absolute game changer. I am I might redecide on this later. Actually, I'm going to redecide on that now. He's mostly good for PvP, but for PvE, his revives are very strong. Now, Flashy Flash, not good for PvE. <laughs> I'm going to put him in the same tier as King, as he is a speedster, and outside of, like, you are Sonic, no speedster is very okay for PvE. So, generally don't get him if you're just going for PvE, which is kind of lame. Then we have Pig God, which please stop existing. He, actually no, no. He is very good in the stages with like, say, Tatsu. Now this is the release order on CN, by the way, because that's why Pig God is here and not up by Grey Boss, because they both released in the same month on Southeast Asia, but technically he released here. So, actually, I don't know. Is Pig God a he? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to question it. Um, I'm going to put him an A for his use in stages. And that is it. Now, then, next up we have Giro Giro. They're, I mean, they're okay. and mm, Their damage isn't good. The only thing they're good for is the anti-ultimate that they have, and I don't think that's good for PvE, so I'm going to leave that in F. Now next up we have Subterranean King, which I believe is also going to be another wheel character, and the DOT is good for PvE. The DOT is very good, they do break through too. I'm going to put him above Garo, but you, he's not a must pull. He's very good, but not a must pull. Now, next up, we have Deep Sea King Plus, and he's going straight to the top of Must Pull because he follows up. He does Specialized Kurud, which is, like, the second strongest effect in the game right now. Actually, almost the second strongest effect in the game, or at least was the strongest effect in the game for a very long time. And he makes this Column follow up, which is also stupidly OP. So, yeah, for those reasons alone, he is insane for PvE. Now, next up, we have Tank Top Master Plus. Uh, he's also very good for PvE, uh, specifically Crescent Tower. So he does very good damage, too. Plus, he has Breakthrough. So I'm going to put him just below... I'm going to put him just above Subterranean King. Because, one, Subterranean King is a wheel character, which means you're very unlikely to get him. And then, you know, Tank Top Master Plus is hopefully a banner character, which will make him a lot easier to get. Now, then we have Drive Knight, which he's a core, so he's must pull. Then we have Melzergard, or SSR Plus. Now, he's also very good. He is the same use as Phoenix Man, but he has to ult to do his revives, so I'm going to put him at a little lower than Phoenix Man, but still very good, and his damage is also better than Phoenix Man, too. Then we have Watchdog Man. Now, mm, he's okay for bosses, but he could be better. Due to not really having a way to gain a lot of specialized guard earlier on, I'm gonna put him at like low A. I'm gonna put him. I, I'm gonna yeah, low A. This is specifically for for, me, for PVE. He does very good single target damage, but it's nowhere near any of the other characters, especially like Garo or like Tank Top Master. He's sim he simply outperforms or underperforms in compared to other characters. Now, next up we have Gory Boss Plus. Now he is also very strong. And he's very good for PvE. He's less important than uh, he's less important than Deep Sea King, in my own opinion. And also, that's an objectively correct opinion. That is not an opinion I need to say is super different. Um, he's very good. No duh. He does specialized Kuro to the whole entire enemy team for his, with his keepsake, which is very good. And his awakening too gives specialized guard to the whole call with to the whole row, which is kind of nuts. 
So for those reasons, I'm going to put him in must pull, but he could also be top of S if you want to put him there too. Then next up we have Zombie Man Plus, and now I'm going to put him a little higher. Actually, does, mm, does Flashy Flash give energy? I cannot remember if Flashy Flash gives energy. If Flashy Flash gives energy, he's like he's the same as C tier. He's the same as Zombie Man here. But the reason I put Zombie Man here is because he gives you extra energy, and that's very nice, so that you can ultimate more inside of boss modes and stuff. So for that reason, I'm gonna put him in C tier. Although he is just a speedster, and it's not really all that useful. Now next up we have Prey Prey Prisoner Plus, and he is exclusively for PvP. Uh, generally, his abilities or charm doesn't really work against PvE enemies, so I'm gonna put... Uh, although he is a single target, so I'm gonna... He's, he's a decent single target too, so I'm gonna put him at upper D, and he does attack the back row, I believe. So that is nice, but he's not... Actually, it's a little... Yeah, that's fine. I... He, he's okay. Uh, yeah, no, I'm gonna leave him here. Now, next up, we have Metal Knight Plus. Now, he is good. But majorly for PvP. He has evasion, and that's one of the big things. And his other big thing is being immune to corrosion. And that's kind of it. He does have the highest AoE in the game. Before Boros. So, I'm gonna put him here. No, I'm gonna put him here. Um, he does good damage, and that's kind of it. Stun isn't super duper useful if you have characters that kill super fast, like Deep Sea King Plus or Grey Boss Plus, or any of the UR characters. So he's not really all that great. Now, next up we have Alloy Plus. Now, he is good. And if you can't get um, Tank Up Master, then he's a great replacement. And... He's okay for PvE. Now, actually, no, he's really good. So if you can get his Awakening 2, he is a must-pull. And he is... That is because his Berserk makes every character do stupid high damage. And that is kind of fucking nuts. Um, the Damage Reflect is also good for making your team more survivable. He His ultimate gives attack... His uh, Keepsake ultimate gives a uh, specialized guard to the whole row, which is also very nice, similar to Grey Boss's, Grey Boss's uh, Awakening 2. So, for that reason, I'm going to put him at just below Grey Boss. But his Awakening 2 is very strong. And did carry me a lot through Hero X Monster. Now, next up, we have Tatsumaki. Now, she is very strong. Actually, I'm going to probably put her at Must Bolt. Because she follows up like six times. She does insanely high DOT. She follows up another time if you have Deep Sea King. And she all she does like eight ultimates if you have Deep Sea King. And then like nine or ten total if you have Deep Sea King and King Awakening 2. Actually, she could do like ten or twelve, like eleven ultimates per round. If you, if you really set that up, which is kind of fucking bonkers. So, she is very good. Very strong. Very insanely strong. Also, she does, she does go back, go past bomb core, which is very good. Now, next up, we have Sonic. Uh, he increases energy, which is good. He does specialized burn, which is DOT, which is also good. His ultimate, if you have his keepsake, which you, if you're pulling Sonic, you need to get his keepsake. His, with his keepsake, he increases your energy gauge by a thousand, which is also very good. His ultimate is free, which is also very good. And also does support specialized berserk. By, you know, with the energy gauge and stuff. Plus the energy. So I'm gonna put him above Subterranean King, but below Tank Top Master. He does not do breakthrough. And he is a speedster, but his energy and specialized burn is also very good. And his DOT, well, his DOT is a specialized burn, but those are very strong and also go pretty well with, with uh, G4. 
So I'm gonna put him here because he does really well. Also, he does not cost any energy and he supports Alloy Plus or even You Are King with the Specialized Berserk. Now, next up we have G4UR or URG4. He's uh, very good. Uh, even better than Tatsu, his, D his DOT is even stronger. He supports Groyboss, Tatsumaki, and Deep Sea King. Also, he does support Sonic. He makes all DOT much stronger, even Subterranean Kings. And honestly, if you're going for pure damage, he is almost unparalleled outside of, like, the sh very, very, very strongest characters. Speaking of the very, very, very strongest characters, we have Your Siryu. Now, Your Siryu does follow up. He has Awakening 2, which makes him follow up even more. Uh, his Awakening 2 is better for bosses than his Awakening 1, as he can actually follow up on bosses. So, also, he does br Breakthrough. He does insanely high injury damage. So, I'm gonna put him, I think, just below G4 for his sheer damage. I know this is a lot of pulls for um, the era, like you are era, but I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for all the pulls. Uh, generally, you can s actually... I'm gonna do that. Due to other... Due to uh, Siryu coming up, I don't think Tatsumaki is quite a must pull. So, next up we have Yor Boros and Noda. Must pull, he's a core. And he's also the next villain core and directly counters specialized, uh, <laughs> fucking specialized and yielding. So it's very good, very strong. His evolve also gives uh, surrounding characters or all characters some uh, breakthrough. And also, funny fa fun fact, he is the strongest AOE with his keepsake in the entire game, hands down. Now next up we have you are Metal Bat. Now, he's also very good for PvE. He does insanely high column damage. Is he a must-pull, though? I'm gonna say no, but he's very, very, very strong. He doesn't follow up unless you have UR King or uh, Deep Sea King. So he's very strong. And he, and if you are building him, uh, if you build him enough, he does more damage than G4 will. If you don't build G4. <laughs> but I don't think he does as well in PvE than as he does in PvP. Although I love your Metal Bat, I'm, I don't think he's that good for PvE. He needs, and he's much better for PvP. Next up, we have your Bengpu, or your Bomb, if you want to go with the English name. Now, he's also good. However, I'm biased. Please stop existing. Actually, no. You can continue existing because you give me bo more black tickets for your banner. But honestly, eh, he's not all that great. His internal injury is good, and he detonates the internal injury. Actually, if I'm going with the unbiased perspective, he's kind of like Glory Boss. So I'd put I'd, I'd put him here. If you if you sh if you want if you're not going for the actually no i'd put him here as he's much better for pve than say metal bat because he hits everyone with insanely high damage instead of just a column with insanely high damage but i'm biased so i'm gonna put him in f like the bottom of f now next up we have you are king which is deep sea king on crack with alloy plus <laughs> so yeah he's on fucking crack so yeah get him he is insane and he, he is the meta character. He is immune to disabled, which means he follows up even through Metal Knights. Plus, oh no, I'm going into PvP. But he's very good. He's very strong. And next up we have UR Atomic. And he's not good for PvPE. Generally. He's okay. He's gonna go same tier as his SSR Plus. It's okay. It does damage. But it's it doesn't do that good against say bosses or generally anybody else so yeah now next up we have galewind which he is a speedster and only really works for pve although if you want to use galewind in your team i guess you can 
All right, and next up is you are Melzergard. Now, he looked to be a really strong character to start out with back when we did not have gameplay of him. But now that we've seen him, he's really bad. He's completely dookie, he's dog water, he's completely ass, even. He is a total piece of garbage. And his main thing is countered by your Hellfire, which I will just get to in just a second. Now, your Muzzleguard is invincible for like three turns and five at his Awakening 2, which is strong. It's very good, it, but he can be killed by crits, although he does reduce crit rate on himself, so he does not get hit with crits very often. But the thing is, he doesn't do very good damage on his own. <laughs> so, the entire rest of the team dies, and he's still alive. And he's sitting there, like, oh fuck, I'm going to die. Anyway, next up is Hellfire Flame. Now, he is very okay for PvP. He does good DOT, and that's kind of it. He does stronger the DOT than Sonic. And that's kind of all he has. He goes good with G4, but that's kind of it. Now, finally, we have You Are Genos. Now, we, I don't think, I don't currently know at least, if he's that good for PvE. But from what I've seen, he's very good for, like, at least very good for PvP. He goes straight through Specialized Guard, which is very strong. And... He does, like, this new thing called True Damage. It goes through Evasion, Specialized Guard, etc. And he is a burn character, which means he does DOT, which means he's buffed by Genos, and he detonates burn, which means he is absolutely fucking busted. All right. Now, again, we are going to do tier list. But now for PvP. So let's get right into it. So first up, we have Silver Fang, because I... This is actually not in order. I had to order it for the first half of the video. And now I don't feel like reordering it. So, yeah. Silver Fang, he's okay. He doesn't... He's not, like, super overpowered. He, he does good AoE, but it's not great. Balkazon, stop existing, please. Thank you. Atomic Samurai is very good for PvE. Or no, <laughs> fucking PvP. Uh, before... DK plus. I think Awaken 2 is also okay after DK plus, but not for very long. Next up, we have Child Emperor. He is worse than Drive Knight, or worse than um, most characters, I'd say. Then we have uh, <laughs> Garo plus, and he's a little better because he does breakthrough. Actually, I'm gonna put him above Atomic Samurai. No, I'm going to put him below Atomic Samurai. He's not great post Garyu. He's kind of okay during Garyu. He's kind of eh before. He, I mean, he doesn't exist before Garyu. Or he doesn't exist before Garyu. So, I mean, yeah. Uh, Boros. For his time, he's pretty good. Mm. I'll put him B tier. He's okay. Uh, his damage sharing is also really good, but it's okay overall. Next up for PvP, we have Phoenix Man. He is a must-get. He revives your teammates. He gives you a 30% crit damage free if you get his Awakening 2. So, there's really no downside to getting him. We have Carnage Kabuto Plus, which I have to say is probably also a must-pull. He is very good for PvP, for at least for his time. Uh, he does... Ins Reflect is always good for PvP. Uh, he follows up on your enemies, and he does good damage. Uh, next up is Goketsu. Uh, unless you're a Mega Whale, don't get him, but he's still very good. His damage sharing is actually even more strong than Boros's, And he does HP damage, which makes him stupid strong to begin with, since that's a very easy stat to scale. Um, next up we have Metal Bat. And I'm going to say you don't need to get him. He's okay. Actually, I'm going to do that. He's good, but I don't think he outperforms these guys in PvP. I'm gonna I'm gonna put him low A or low S. Now we have uh, Flash Flash Speedster. Get him if you're playing for PvP only. Play him, get him, 
get him. Garyu, he's a core. I don't need to say much further. Uh, Giro Giro, he is good. However, you really only get him if you really need to get him. He's good, but I don't recommend him. Um, King, seals energy, just like Flashy Flash. Speedster, get him. If you can, of course. Then we have, uh, we have Pig God Plus. He's kind of shit. He's honestly not that good. He's kind of cooked. <laughs> That's kind of all I got to say. Um, he's alright. But he is not good. He's not as good as, say, Phoenix Man. He's not as good as, say, Melzer Guard. Next up, we have a uh, Subterranean King Plus. Now, he loses pretty hard to Grey Boss and DSK Plus. Uh, pretty easily, actually. So, I'm going to put him in S. Now, we have DFC King Plus. For the same reasons as he is a must-pull in PvE, he is a must-pull in PvP. Because he is fucking busted, no matter how you look at him. Tank Top Master Plus. He's okay. He's good. He's very good for PvP. All the way up until Grey Boss Plus, and then he's not as good for like a while. So, I'm gonna put him in highest S. But, I just... I don't know. Same reason as, reason as Phoenix Man, get him for the revives. Now, I don't believe, I don't know if Phoenix Man and Melzergard revives stack together, but if they do, um, then they are a pretty busted team to have. Next up is the dog, a early attempt to counter, um, an early attempt to counter Deep Sea King Plus, and it flopped. It's not a good character. I have never seen him once be useful in PvP. I could have a team of LSSRs fight Watch Dog Man Plus, and they would probably win. He is just not that good. Actually, I'm going to put him down and please stop existing. Now, Metal Knight Plus counters Deep Sea, or counters Deep Sea King Plus, counters Grey Boss Plus, if I could put him in Must Pull. And his keepsake stuns four characters, and they had to nerf him because if they didn't, then it would stun your entire team and fuck you over. So yeah, he's a must pull. Uh, Zombie Man, Speedster, get him. He increases your energy, so he's still very good. Uh, Purry Purry Prisoner Plus. Uh, actually, when your King comes out, he becomes top of S. But before that, and for most of the time, until you are Melzer Guard, I guess, he's like a below Tank Top Master, I'd say. Uh, Drive Knight, he's a core. Get him. Don't need to really say much more than that. Gory Boss Plus, uh, strongest character, and is absolutely insane for, for like, the two months <laughs> that he is really good for. I'm actually going to put him top of S instead of Tank Top Master, because... He doesn't really last all that long, and he gets countered by Metal Knight really fast. So, yeah. Alloy Plus, definitely a must pull. Um, kinda counters your uh, Metal Knight. Metal Knight gets reflected damage, and he fucking dies. So, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, you are Tatsu. I mean, if you're going for full PvP, she is top of S. I don't think she's a must pull, because further characters are a little better in my opinion. Um, then Sonic, Speedster, pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna actually put the Speedsters before these guys. Uh, then we have G4, very good pull, not necessarily needed. Um, Anti-stun, very good. Uh, that's kind of all I got. If you Awakening to him, he's immune to stun, but I don't think he's a must pull. Phoenix Man up here. Next up, we have Siryu. Must pull. Uh, immune to Adhesion. I don't know if he's immune to Disabled. He might. He may or may not be. But I cannot remember if he is. I, he's not immune to Stun. But he is still an insanely strong character. And his Awakening 2 is still annoying to this day. Next up, we have Boros. Core character. Uh, he also increases... 
your damage rate in PvP by 30% and lowers the damage that you take in PvP by 30%. So until like you are Genos, he Boros is the best core, and then it goes back to fucking Gary you because honestly, fucking hate this game. <laughs> you are Metal Bat, definitely a must get. Uh, Annihilates Columns is meta for like five, seven months. Um, absolutely fucking insane is what I'm gonna say. Um, you are Bang Poo. I'm gonna go below G4. And that's because G4 is useful later on, and then Bang Poo uh, gets countered by Hellfire. So he's not only really great. Next up is You are King. You are King is fucking insane. No questions asked. It's fucking, like, it's Alloy Plus mixed with fucking Deep Sea King Plus, but better. His Awakening 2 follows up twice in one round, in the first round, and then once per the rest of the rounds. And also increases all of your damage on your characters by 150% instead of 100% in Awakening 2. And it is absolutely nuts. Atomic Samurai, you are... Ugh, he's kind of fucking ass. Just like the rest of Specialized Shatter. You are Galewind. Uh, better than the rest of the speedsters. Also stuns, which is pretty dark, which is pretty okay. Um, your Melzer guard, completely fucking ass. Um, he died. He he just he, it makes your rounds last up until turn three. That's it. That's all it does. It stops you from losing until turn three, and he does not win on its own. He needs atomic samurai. You are, and he needs gale wind. You are, and even then, he is completely fucking ass. Even for PvP, PvE, PvE be damned, he's garbage. You are Hellfire Flame, definitely a must get, especially as Awakening 2 makes you completely immune to every type of stun, no matter what, infinitely. His Awakening 2 makes you infinitely immune to stun. It removes stun before every action, from, like, infinitely. It's fucking insane. And next up, we have You are Genos. God, he's good. He bypasses Specialized Guard. He detonates fucking specialized burn. If you're getting your gen, if you're getting, if you plan to get your genos, you're getting your G4, because your G4 will make him even better than he already is. Anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed today's One Punch Man: The Strongest tier list. Uh, well, at least the two tier lists. I hope you guys all enjoyed. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you did enjoy, and uh, join my Discord server if you'd like to. Uh, it's pretty okay in there. I haven't uploaded in a while, so it's a little dead. But I try my best to have it be alive. If you'd like to support me, I have some links in my description. Check them out if you care. I mean, generally, it's okay. And I hope you guys all have a great day. And I'll see you later. Bye.